chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If you are a Bible reader, you know that 1 Corinthians 15 is about the resurrection of the dead. Amen. It talks about the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, and then it talks about the resurrection of those who believe in him. Amen. How many of you who have come to church tonight believe in Jesus Christ? Let me see your hand. You believe in him. Okay, the Bible says that that those who believe in Jesus are going to be raised from the dead. Amen. And I've preached over the uh, the last few Wednesdays. I didn't preach last Wednesday because Pastor Charlie Fierro was here and he preached. Uh, I've been preaching about heaven. And so I want, to, I want you to think with me for a moment that and understand that heaven is the main reason that we come to church because we want to go to heaven. Amen. So let me ask you a question. You can respond by a, by a raised hand as well. How many of you want to go to heaven when you die? Want to go to heaven when you die? Okay. Praise God. That's not a trick question. Okay. Uh, that's, that's a sincere question. And so we believe in Jesus and we preach Jesus because not only do we want to go to heaven, but we want everyone else to go to heaven too. Okay, and the reason that we want people to go to heaven is because we don't want them to go to hell. Amen. Amen. This is the whole reason that we're we're putting on this this haunted maze to present a gospel message so that people can understand what's at stake and understand that it the issue is life or death. The issue is eternal life or eternal death which is very very serious and so what we're talking about and what we're presenting this weekend is this idea of going to heaven amen uh, i've preached about about the place that is heaven that this is the 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 dwelling place of god uh, last sermon i preached was about the holy city new jerusalem the city whose builder and maker is God coming down out of heaven and resting on the new earth. Did you know that, that the Bible says God is going to create a new heaven and a new earth? And righteousness is going to dwell there. And everybody who uh, has served God and given their lives to Jesus and is serving God faithfully is going to be there with him for eternity. Amen. And so there's a lot about heaven that we don't think about. And I want to, the message tonight is, is uh, an answer to a question, and that is what we will be like in heaven. What are we going to be like in heaven? You know, some people have different ideas about this. You know, uh, they, you know, if you watch cartoons and you see a cartoon character get blown up, next thing you know, they're sitting on a cloud floating, playing a harp. And that's, that's, that's the idea of heaven that some people have. Others really don't even think about where they're going to spend eternity or how. And so the Bible says that uh, there's two places a person can go. Jesus said there's a wide road that leads to destruction. He was referring to hell. He said, he said most people are on that road. He said, but there's a narrow road with a narrow entrance that leads to everlasting life. That's heaven. And he says, and few there are who find that place. Okay, so, so there's two places a person can go, heaven or hell. And so what I'm talking about tonight, I'm not going to preach about hell. I'm going to preach about heaven and what we are going to be like 
when and if we get to heaven. So let's read a few verses in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 42 to 44, what we will be like in heaven. It, it says this, verse 42, so also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we ask that you would have right of way tonight. I pray for the anointing of your Holy Spirit. I pray for a clear message, Lord, that you would take these words, God, and that you would cause them to touch the hearts of your people, God. Bring clear understanding, God. Clear decision to follow Jesus. If there's anyone here who's not saved, I pray, open their hearts. And uh, by the end of this service, I pray, help them to desire to do your will, God, that they may find eternal life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So when we read this text, one conclusion that we can draw for sure is that in heaven, we will have a physical body. Amen. It says, it says the body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It says it is sown a spiritual body and it is raised or it is sown a natural body and it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Okay. And so the language there tells us that in heaven, in eternity, we're going to have a body. Amen. Okay. Uh, the philosopher Plato and many others of his age taught that the body was evil and that the spirit was good. And so this was an idea that permeated the Greek and Roman thinking. And so I want you to, to think about this with me because we're people who read the word of God. We believe that the Bible is the word of God. And so what the word of God tells us is that God created man in the beginning with a spirit, a soul, and a body. And it God's commentary was that everything that he created was good. So the body was not evil. The body was good. It, God created it good. In Genesis 1, 31, it says, and God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And evening, the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So it says, this is the end of the, the first day or the days of creation in Genesis 1. It says, God looked at everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. Amen. So everything was good. The world was good. Uh, every There were no weeds. There was no thorns or thistles any, uh, at all. That None of that happened until sin entered the world. And so as you know, sin entered the world. Adam and Eve were tempted. They ate of the, the forbidden fruit. It does not say that the forbidden fruit was an apple. We don't know what it was. But whatever it was, uh, whatever kind of fruit it was, uh, it caused sin to come into the world and that brought corruption. That corrupted everything. You know, everything was good to start with, including the human body. And so, but when sin entered and, and brought corruption, it brought what the New Testament calls the flesh. La carne, the flesh. The Apostle Paul wrote about his flesh. He said, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. And what it describes is the, the sinful nature of man that has passed down from generation to generation. Uh, Robert Morris, in his last episode that we watched, uh, he, he said that uh, that uh, you don't have to teach children to be bad. They're bad naturally. What you have to do is teach them to be good. Amen. Teach them to share and to, to, to have respect. Teach them, 
you know, to, to say yes, sir, and no, sir, and to be respectful to their elders. Uh, you know, we don't naturally do that. We're naturally rebellious. Amen. So this is why the Apostle Paul said that the body, the natural body, is sown in corruption, but the eternal body will be raised in incorruption. Okay, so let's think about those two words for a second. Corruption. Okay, he said the natural body is corrupt. So I, I thought that was interesting. I thought, you know, that's worth looking up those words. And so the word corruption, as it's used here, uh, it, it means destruction. It means decay. It means rottenness. It means decomposition. And I tell you something about this natural body of ours. It is, it is falling apart. As soon as you're born, your life begins a process. And at, at a certain point, you know, it's different for, uh, you know, boys and girls. At a certain point, you reach maturity. You know, whether it's 21 or 24 uh, or 27, whatever age that is, you reach your peak, uh, your peak health, growth. And then after that, you stop growing and your body begins to fail. Slowly but surely, it gets, it starts to wear out. The Apostle Paul uh, talked about this. He says, for our outward man is perishing, but the inward man is being renewed. So there is a decomposition that takes place in the human body. So that's what he's talking about. That when you die, your body is, is not going to just naturally start you know, going bad anymore. It's going to go completely bad. It's going to decompose. That's why some people prefer to be uh, uh, cremated because they become ashes right away. So it says you bought, the body is sown in corruption, but it is raised in incorruption. That word incorruption means unending existence. And it's interesting, it uses another word called genuineness. I thought about that and I was thinking, you know, when God created uh, the, the, you know, human race, Adam and Eve, those were the originals. They were the originals. They were created perfect. And so when, when I read the word genuineness, I, I couldn't help but think of the original creation. And that in the resurrection, our bodies will be like Adam and Eve's bodies before the fall. Did you know they never, they weren't ever supposed to die. They were created to live forever. That's why they lived so long. Adam lived over 900 years. Did you know that? Yeah. And that's because there was no sickness. There was no disease yet. All that began to, to enter as a result of sin. So the body is going to be raised in incorrupt, incorruption. The Apostle Paul called this the redemption of our body in Romans 8 23 he said this not only that but we also who have the first fruits of the spirit even we ourselves grown within ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption the redemption of our body and what that's talking about is the resurrection that is going to come to all men and so here's the point our bodies that that are corrupt will be restored and when that restoration takes place we're going to be perfect amen first corinthians 5 1 says for we know this is new living translation for we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down that is when we die and leave this earthly body we will have a house in heaven an eternal body made for us by god himself and not by human hands. We grow weary in our present bodies. Anybody here growing weary in your present body? Amen. You know, if you're young and you're not, you're not, you know, over the hill like some of us, uh, you're you're not weary in your present body yet. But eventually, if you live long enough, you'll get there. It says we grow weary in our present bodies, and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. Praise the Lord! It's going to be. Awesome. For we will put on heavenly bodies. 
We will not be spirits without bodies. I like that. We will not be spirits without bodies. We're going to have a body. While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and sigh. But it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. Amen. Amen. See, when you're saved and you die, you're not dying. When you, when you are a, a servant of Jesus Christ and this body dies, you're not dying. You're passing from this death into eternal life. Amen. Praise God for that. Can you say amen? We will have a physical body. Our body will have substance. Amen. Jesus had a physical body when he was raised from the dead. Read the Bible. Amen. When he appeared to the disciples, they were afraid. You know, they're locked in this upper room. They're hiding. And all of a sudden, Jesus was there. Nobody knocked. Nobody opened the door. and But all of a sudden, there he is. How did he get there? They were afraid. They, they thought they were seeing a spirit, a ghost. And listen to what Jesus said to them. Luke 24, 37 to 39. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do you doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. So Jesus, when he was raised from the dead, he was substantial. He wasn't a spirit, a ghost. He was him. Amen. What's interesting is that, you know, when I think about this, I think, wow, Jesus just like appeared. I wonder, are we going to be able to do that too? You know, just like, you know, think of going somewhere and being somewhere and then next thing you know, there you are. Sounds better than the transporter from Star Trek, you know. Leave me up, Scotty. Uh, and, 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 you know, wonderful thing, amen. In John 20, verse 19 and 20, it says, then the same day at evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews Jesus came and stood in the midst of them and said to them peace be with you when he had said this he showed them his hands and his side and the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord they knew it was him they recognized him amen he had a substantial body in Acts 1 9 it says now when he had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. He bodily, he was taken into heaven. Amen. And so, we're going to have a physical body. Amen. Now, on the same token, if you die in your sins, and you go to hell, and eventually into the lake of fire you will have a physical body there as well. And you'll feel the torment of it. So my recommendation is, get saved, give your life to Jesus, serve God faithfully so you can go to heaven. Amen. Okay, here's another thing I want to, to uh, bring to your attention. And that is this. Not only will we have a physical body, but we will retain our gender. If you're a woman, you'll be a woman in heaven. If you're a man, you'll be a man in heaven. We will be what God created us to be. How do we know that? Well, uh, at the resurrection, the first person to see Jesus raised from the dead was a, one of his followers, a woman by the name of Mary Magdalene. She saw him after he was raised from the dead, didn't recognize him at first, but then she did. So it says this in John chapter 20, verse 15. 14 and 15, it says, she turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you've taken him away, tell me where you've put him and I will go get him. Now, the reason I read that is because she saw this person as a man 
She called him sir. And, you know, if you keep reading in that in that scripture in John chapter 20, uh, he, he calls her by name and then she recognized that it was Jesus. And so we're going to be the gender that God created us to be. From one of his novels about heaven, Randy Alcorn wrote this. He says, God may unmake what men make. Listen to me. God may unmake what men make, but he does not unmake what he makes. He made you male, and he made your mother and wife and daughters female. Gender is not merely a component of your being to be added in or extracted or discarded. It's, a, it's an essential part of who you are. You know, we live in a culture that where people are very confused about their gender. Well, I think I should be a girl. A boy saying that. A girl is saying, I should be a, or a boy is saying, I should be a girl, and a girl is saying, I should be a boy. And there's a lot of confusion that is being fostered in our world today. You know, I read an article, uh, I think it was yesterday morning, about a boy that was arrested from a high school because he identified as a girl. He would go into the girl's bathroom wearing a skirt and he was arrested because he sexually assaulted two girls, two different schools. I, I think he knows what he is. So here's the thought that I had. You're gonna be the gender God created you in heaven. And this makes me think that people who mutilate themselves with sex changes or transitions, that when they get saved, you know, no matter what they've done to their bodies on this earth, when they get saved and they go to heaven, they're going to be the gender God created them to be. Amen. You know, there's lots of, lots of testimonies of, of men and women who have undergone surgeries to change their sex who later realize that you know what i'm not i'm not a woman or i'm not a man they, they somehow they come to their senses and realize that's not what i am i'm and i never will be and and there's testimony you can find testimonies like this on youtube and watch them and, and some of these some of these young people and even older people now have gotten saved and right with God, forgiven. And all I'm saying is there's hope for them. Amen. There's hope for everybody. Everyone who will believe in Jesus Christ can be saved. And no matter what they've done to themselves on this earth, God will make it right. Let me, let me read that quote again. God may unmake what men make, but he does not unmake what he makes. He made you male as he made your mother and wife and daughters female. Gender is not merely a component of your being to be added in or extracted and discarded. It is an essential part of who you are. So your mother in heaven will still be your mother. Amen. Your son will still be your son. They'll still be male. Your husband will still be male, and you will get to know them and see them. Praise God. Okay, part of the the thought of being having a body in heaven is this. Uh, you know, this is the last thing I want to talk about. That is that we will eat in heaven. Amen. We're going to eat. We're going to have good food. Think about your favorite food. What is your favorite food? What do you like to eat the most? I'll tell you, one of my favorite foods is steak. <laughs> now, I don't know if there's gonna be steak in heaven. I know there's gonna be steak in the millennium, you know, the thousand year reign before the, you know, the, the eternal uh, uh, you know, uh, world is created because there's gonna be sacrifices and there's gonna be plenty of good food. but you know, heaven is going to be a place of joy. 
It's going to be a place of rejoicing. It's going to be a place of feasting. Okay? So Jesus, in his resurrected body, ate food, and so will we. Luke 24, verse 30 and 31 says this. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed and broken, and gave it to them. It says, then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. So he's sitting at the table there with these disciples. It doesn't say there that he ate, but it says that he took food. Okay, now in, in the same chapter, in verse 40, to verse 43, it does say, it says, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate in their presence. Amen. So Jesus ate. You know, the Bible says we don't know what exactly what we're going to be like, but when he comes back, we're going to see him as he is, and we're going to be like him. Okay? That's in 1 John. And so, you know, when, when I, I don't know how my mind... Sometimes my mind goes places that I'm like, well, you know, I don't know about this. But I was thinking, okay, if we're going to eat in heaven, I don't know how the sewer system is going to work there. <laughs> and so I was thinking, well, maybe it'll empty into the lake of fire. <laughs> I don't know. But I also thought, you know, God could create a body that produces no waste. That's hard to imagine, but he could absolutely do that. But one thing I, I want you to understand is there's going to be a feast in heaven. A feast after the rapture of God's church. It's called the marriage supper of the Lamb. Let me read uh, Revelation 19 to you. In verse 5 through 9 it says, Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God. All you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters and as the sound of mighty thundering saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the, fine, uh, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Right, blessed are they who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. He meant, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. What do you do at supper? You sup. You eat. Amen. And you know, there's one place I didn't look it up, but it says, and he himself will serve them. Can you imagine being at a banquet table? Uh, yeah, I, I can't imagine the banquet room for the marriage supper of the Lamb. You're talking multitudes of people. You're talking millions of people who were, who were raptured from the earth, who were resurrected in the first resurrection, and now they're seated uh, at all these tables in this great banquet hall, the marriage of the Lamb, uh, the Lamb is Jesus, and it says there's, there's going to be a great feast. Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, kind of a, a, a sad uh, uh, part to that story is that, you know, it's, it's like a coin. There's two sides to a coin. The church of Jesus is going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb rejoicing in his presence and feasting at his table. They're going to be enjoying the glory of God and the presence of Almighty God. But at the same time on the earth, because the earth isn't judged yet, is what's happening there is the great tribulation. You know, you read Revelation 13 to, to 16 and, and, and terrible judgments are falling on the earth at that time. But the church of Jesus is going to be in heaven in a physical body, enjoying the presence of God. Amen. I want to read a quote to you as I close from 
one of the characters in Randy Alcorn's novel, Dominion. Here's a guy who, you know, according to the, 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 the book, is in heaven. He said this, I find that what I experience in heaven is largely an outgrowth of earth. The two aren't disconnected. It's not a new and separate reality as much as an extension of the old reality. My mind is the same mind, only sharper. My soul is the same soul, only completely pure. My skills are the same skills, but less hindered in their expression. And Randy Alcorn writes this, yes, God will change us in heaven. Aren't you glad? But he will never obliterate or replace us. Aren't you glad for that too? We will still be us, a better us than we can possibly imagine. Amen. Amen. A better us than we can possibly imagine. See, God's, God's will and God's design for you and I is to save us. But what saving us means, it's not just an escape from hell. It is that. And thank God for that. Can you say amen? Don't go to hell. You know that no no. That 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 is a place you do not want to go. But heaven is a good place. Heaven is going to be an awesome place. And when we go to heaven, we're going to be the people God created us to be perfected. Amen. You know, we say, well, nobody's perfect. Not yet. But if you'll serve God and faithfully follow Jesus, one day you will be perfect. Can you imagine living someplace where you don't have any more weaknesses? Imagine that. Where there's no more temptation. Where you don't struggle with an addiction. Wouldn't that be awesome? Amen. You know, not, not only will you well, you not struggle with any of those things, but there's going to be such an incredible blessing, such a joy that fills your heart, such a an awesome place. You'll be there with people you know and love. You know, and some people, they say, well, I don't want to be there with so-and-so because, you know, there was some kind of issue with them in this life. Let me tell you something. In heaven, there won't be any more issues. That's right, man. There won't be anything to forgive because nobody's going to sin anymore. There's not ever going to be someone who does you wrong again. Can you imagine that? You know, how many people have been violated in this life? I mean, all of us. We've all gone through things. We've all endured things. We've all been hurt. We've all been offended at one time or another. But I'm going to tell you, when we go to heaven, all of that, will be in the past. It'll be gone and it'll never happen again. Amen. Amen. And so I want to encourage you tonight. It's worth it to serve God. It's worth it to give your life to Jesus, to spend eternity in that place with him. Can you say amen? Amen. If you want to go to heaven, you just need to follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. You know, if you want to go to hell, if you, you know, if you, if it doesn't matter to you, just keep doing what you've always done, and you'll get there. That's that's a simple truth. It's kind of hard, but it's true. It's real. See, God loved us so much that He gave His Son to die on a bloody cross so that He could forgive us, and for us to be saved, it takes faith. You know, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you believe he died on the cross for your sins, and you believe that God raised him from the dead, you can be saved very simply. The Bible says the word is in our mouth and in our hearts. It says if you will confess with your mouth that you believe in the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you, you'll be saved. You can be saved. Your sins forgiven, washed away. And you can know that when you leave this life, you're going to go into heaven. 
where you're going to have a perfect body. You're going to be a perfect personality. Amen. No more sulking, no more self-pity, no more anything, because it's there's nothing but good in heaven. There's no evil there at all. The devil will have been judged, cast into the lake of fire. The demons that torment you in this life will be in the lake of fire, and you'll never suffer with them again. Amen. Thank God for that. Can you say amen? Amen. Praise God. Okay, so we're going to pray. Let's bow our heads together. Would you bow your head with me? We're going to pray and ask God to bless us as we go our way and as we as we bring this service to a close tonight. I want to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus, to make sure that your heart is right with God. You know, when I, at the beginning of the service, I said, how many here want to go to heaven? Everybody raised their hand. Nobody in their right mind wants to go to hell and spend eternity in the lake of fire. And I want to give you an opportunity tonight to make a decision to pray a prayer to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. An opportunity to receive forgiveness for your sins as you confess them to God. You don't have to confess your sins to me. I'm just a man. I can't forgive your sins. But God can and God will. The Bible says if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Bible says the blood of Jesus has the power to cleanse your conscience. That means to take away all the guilt and the shame that you have in your life for the things that you've done. God loves you and God will forgive you if you'll ask him. And so if you've come tonight and you're not saved, you're not right with God, and you want to say a prayer with me to, to, to give your heart to Christ, I'd like you to do one thing for me. Just lift your hand while our heads are bowed. Lift it up and hold it for a moment. Say, yes, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you. Anyone else quickly? Raise your hand. We'll pray. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. I'm just going to pray with you quickly. Raise your hand. Say, yes, Pastor. Pray with me. I want to get right with God. I want to go to heaven. Amen. Okay, then I'd like you to do one other thing for me. I'd like you to stand to your feet. Right where you are, just stand up, and we're going to pray. Amen. You want to pray, just stand with me, and bow your head, and say this prayer with me. If you're watching online, you can pray this prayer with me, and God will hear you. Say this. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you, that you died on the cross, to take away my sin and that you rose from the dead to give me a new life. I confess to you, Lord, I am a sinner and I'm sorry for all my sin. Please forgive me. Jesus, come into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for rising from the dead for me. And thank you, Lord, that you're preparing a place for me in heaven where I can be with you forever. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and give me the strength to serve you from now on as long as I live. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, while you remain standing for a moment, I'm just going to say a prayer for you. Father, I pray for these, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you, do a miracle in their lives, God. Oh, God, transform them. Help them to know how much you love them. Make yourself real. Wash them in the blood of Jesus. Give them strength to serve God and to do your will. To go on from this point forward, living for Jesus. Lord, as they read your word, the Bible, open their understanding. Help them to know and to understand how much you love them. Speak to them from your word. And give them grace to serve you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you'd like to, those of you who are standing, others who are sitting, 
I'm going to open the altar and I want to encourage you to you come and you talk to God in your own words. Come and kneel at the altar and you just pray to Jesus. And, amen. Pour your heart out to him. Know that he loves you. Amen. So let's the rest of us stand together in this place as we as we bring our service to a close. Amen. I want to open the altars and encourage you to come find a place to pray. Holiness. Amen. This altar is open. You want to come find a place to pray. tonight that is the very best decision you'll ever make in your entire life amen i want to encourage you to keep on serving jesus amen